Well, howdy, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to another edition of That's Railroad, where we bring the railroad to you. <laughs> and uh, we got the train leaving the mine here, doing a roll by inspection as he's leaving, and I'm getting on track. I had the last couple of videos, we're on ultrasonic rail testing and uh, showed you a transverse fissure in that. As soon as this train goes by, I'll show you another picture of that 30% uh, growth of a transverse fissure. So you get a lot of questions and comments and I said I'd make another video on transverse and compound fissures and uh, we're going to do that today. Alrighty, so I hope you enjoy this. This is uh, back around in 1911. There was a serious train derailment in Manchester, New York. I don't know the railroad's name. Um, it killed 29 people and 60 people were seriously injured. After that, a uh, the investigation showed a broken rail caused that derailment. And uh, after investigation of the broken rail, a uh, gentleman from the U.S. Bureau of Safety, a guy by the name of Dr. Howard, identified the break to be because of a transverse fissure in the rail. That's what he termed it. All right, so we're going to talk about uh, transverse fissures today. Okay, very good. All right, I got to get on track here, and I uh, I, I hope you uh, enjoyed today's show, and I hope it's educational. Uh, it's uh, pretty interesting stuff to me, these internal growths inside the rail, and uh, they tar start out just molecular in size and it's uh, I'll tell you more about that here in as we go along in the video okay I got to get on track I'll be right back with some more <laughs> okay Okay, I want to tell you, uh, by definition, a transverse fissure is a progressive crosswise fracture starting from a nucleus inside the head of the rail. <laughs> ah, they're loading cars here. <laughs> a little noisy. Then spreading outward substantially at right angles to the running surface of the rail. Uh, the internal, now here's how it gets started. The internal nucleus is an imperfection in the steel, uh, such as a shatter crack or a uh, minute inclusion or a blowhole. Uh, now, over time, the uh, loading of the train over the rails, the stresses, the heavy train traffic, that actually uh, starts the growth of that transverse separation, okay, around that imperfection. So you have a, a nucleus in there, it's, it's, uh, it's very small, it's a molecular in size, and there's a separation around that nucleus from the steel and so that the the, uh, the heavy train traffic over it that starts that separation and it grows inside the uh, rail kind of like a cancer grows inside a body you know and it keeps getting larger and larger also what is involved uh, and is the uh, expansion and contraction of the rail that stretches and contracts the rail also, and that uh, adds to the uh, growth of that. All right? 
Uh, now, on the compound fisher, by definition, the compound fisher is a progressive fracture in the head of the rail, generally starting as a horizontal separation, which turns up or down in both directions to form a transverse separation substantially at right angles to the rail surface. And uh, also the compound fissure is no different than the transverse fissure as far as how it grows in size. All right? So don't you go away because uh, we'll be back with some more information on that. All right, so here you have a picture of a compound fissure. And uh, here's a picture of another one. All right, we'll be right back here. All right, here's some pictures of uh, some transverse fissures. See the uh, growth rings in there? That's pretty cool, isn't it? There's a very large one, and that's blackened by oxidation. Showed you that in that picture that we had there. All right, very cool. This is a pretty neat picture. keeps wanting to come out of focus I do apologize for that all right okay we're here on my computer on the FRA track inspectors uh, website this is a compound fisher and I wanted to show you these rings in here See them? Rings going down. Okay. There's another one. That's a. Uh, let's go up here and see this. That's a. Uh, yeah, let me get the mouse. This is a, let's call it smooth and polished transverse development. Okay. That shows, that's a detail fracture showing normal growth. This is a detail fracture with normal growth. And this ring through here shows sudden growth. Alrighty. Pretty cool stuff. This shows a normal growth. See, once these get to a certain size, then it seems like they grow faster. It's just like a, a, like a cancer that uh, it takes a long time for the to grow to a certain size, but once it gets to a certain size,
And this would be what they call sudden growth. Okay, how about that? Oh, there's one I should have shown you. <laughs> I told you there's there's a vertical split head. <laughs> that's that's pretty wild, isn't it? You hate going down to be a track inspector and go down and see track and see that. <laughs> All right. We'll be back with more. Okay, we're on the uh, Nordco, and I have a hard copy of this book. This is on the line here. That uh, pretty much says what I've told you already. See that. Okay, and they say the origin is, and I think I pretty much told you this too, the origin is an imperfection in the steel, such as a shatter, shatter crack or a minute inclusion. Wheel impact or bending stresses frequently start the growth of a transverse separation around the originating imperfection. So there's one thing I did not add in about the bending stresses when you get soft ballast. You get that uh, that mud underneath the tracks, then uh, <laughs> that's that's that causes that rail to go up and down, and we'll want to flex a little bit. So getting rid of the uh, the mud in the tracks is uh, pretty important. <laughs> There's their picture of a compound fissure. And their, their uh, saying for the, for the origin is the fissure usually starts on a, as a horizontal separation from an internal longitudinal seam segregation or inclusion from the manufacturing process. It develops longitudinally for some distance, then turns upwards, downwards, or both in relation to the transverse plane. Hope you understood that. Alrighty, very good. Well, okay. I uh, we're coming up here in the spot where that rail had broken there at curve 44. I wanted to tell you uh, they had so many problems with the broken rails back then. I told you earlier in the video about the history and. Uh, so the rail manufacturers and the railroads got together and they had a big meeting, big meeting. And they decided to, in that big meeting when to have another big meeting. <laughs> oh, oh, I had to throw that in there. I hope you enjoyed that. Isn't that the way corporate meetings go? They have a meeting to decide when to have the next meeting. Anyway, that uh, broken rail was right in here. All right. Um, get serious here again though the the railroads back then after they discovered the internal defects were the cause of many derailments broken rails um, they got together and, and uh, with the rail manufacturers and they decided and what they came up with over the over the course of the years not only the ultrasonic rail testing but to prevent the Gross inside the rail. Uh, they developed the process called controlled cooling. Okay, uh, next year, next year I plan on doing a series of videos on uh, rail, and one of those I will go over and uh, talk to you about the controlled cooling process, what all it is, what all it does. There are currently two different methods, uh, controlled cooling and vacuum degassing. Uh, the, the controlled cooling will have a CC stamped in the mill brand, and the vacuum uh, degas process will have a VT for vacuum treated. Okay, um, again, there'll be more about that in the future, but that controlled cooling, see when you have a piece of rail and you just lay it down flat out of the, after it's rolled, uh, the, the, the ends are going to cool down at a faster rate than the middle. And uh, 
what they, the desirable is to have an even cooling across the entire stick of rail. And that significantly decreased the amount of internal um, defects in the rail that controlled cooling. So the rail was cooled. The same temperature drops down the entire stick of the rail. Alrighty. Uh, all right. Hope you've uh, enjoyed today's show. I uh, thank you uh, very much for tuning in. And uh, you keep it on the rails and you keep going great until we meet again, my friend. All right. That's railroad. <laughs> I love this job.